welcome to Rauta. I am Jerry and this time we're gonna go about the old rant topic, reviews, what's the point? Now I hope I'm not gonna hear talk some 20 minutes to you about all the nonsense and all the bullshit and all those opinions that don't really matter about the topics of reviews. But because this is one of those topics that people keep addressing year after year or decade after decade, while things change and some things are still the same, let's do one more at least. Now, the point is, what's the topic of the reviews? Well, what's the point of the reviews? Why they are reviews? Are they even needed in the days of algorithms and platforms already recommending you music? I mean, of course, everybody already knows all the good bands. This is sarcasm in case you don't know, but I mean, let's be honest about it. Big bands are known because they are relatively good. They tour a lot and all that stuff, but there are lots of underground gems to be found. So who do you really, really trust? Who do you go for recommendations, suggestions, or new names? Do you go for algorithms? Do those platforms actually know better what you should be listening to? Or what are the bands you should be knowing them? Coming from underground metal scene and all. Or you go for your friends or maybe reviewers, random people talking about music here and there. But in the end, they don't know nothing, right? That's the whole conversation. A lot of people have been asking why I do reviews. What's really the point? Because, like I said, algorithm, they care that. Or people say, like, these reviewers, they all have bad days. They don't understand music. Because, obviously, when you're a reviewer, you just listen to music. And then you want to go all critical about ranting about this and that. But what really separates critical uh, reviewer from your friend doing the same? You know, recommending you music or recommending you not to check out certain bands. Well, I think there's only one factor, really. The reviewer wants to be heard. They really probably usually have some kind of experience through the scene. Not saying your friend don't, but the point here is, reviewer is supposed to make kind of a firm stand. Whether a band is bad, mediocre, or just great, he's supposed, he or she, whatever, is supposed to make some kind of a statement about the band. Give you a little bit of background information, maybe, like in my case, gonna do a little bit of unboxing, showing you what the CD or LP or tape is all about. Like, hey, we have these, we have that, we have all these CDs and fancy ones, and then we're gonna open and then unbox and show you the contents, like here are the photos, here's the album name, here's the album cover, here's the lineup, here are the lyrics, here are your final regards to your friends and families and whatever. But the point is, in the end, to say, whether this or that album is actually good, we're listening to or something else. And that's where it separates, you know, from your friend. Your friend probably just like, hey, have you heard the latest Kerry King album? Yeah, it's pretty good. You should check it out. Thanks, bye. Whereas the reviewer is more like, okay, I really have to justify what I'm going to say here. Well, how I'm going to explain this music, though, the next door's Amy is going to understand what this is about. So it's like raw black metal coming from Portugal with a kind of a lo-fi production, yes. The, the vocals are barely audible, but you know, the guitar sound is pretty goddamn badass. It's sick, raw, and cutting edge. I mean, being lo-fi and all, but still. And the drum, man, the snare sound is fantastic. It's gonna just blow your head off when you listen to that. And let me tell you about the guitar riffs. They're fucking great, and the so on. So the point here is, between the typical conversation when your friends say something about, hey, the new Behemoth album sucks, it's so bad, blah, blah, blah. He probably just mentions like the album name and the band and whether it's good or not, according to his own opinion. The reviewer basically does the same, but gives you a little bit more background information. Like if there's the album, he's gonna cover this and that side of, and also a little bit of that and that as well. Does that matter? Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. So for example, when I'm doing an unboxing video, when I'm showing you an LP, and showing the quality, showing you the picture, showing you what the contents are like, maybe that is helpful for some of you. Then again, those who are already going for some Bandcamp or YouTube are like, I'm not buying physical products, man. I don't give a shit about the lyrics. I don't give a shit about the cover art. I don't give a shit about anything else except, is the music good? Sometimes all you need is, you get to hear it. The music is good. Check it out, man. And that's it. That's the whole conversation. You don't even need to know about the genre. So you don't really care if it's Taylor Swift or next Persum album. That album is solid. Check it out, man. Thanks. Bye. And that's all you have. Fine. It's it's totally fine. But what I'm really questioning is not about your friends versus the review guys. I actually put them in the same box. Really like, hey, this review guy is just a metal fan as is your friend. They just do the recommendations or unrecommendations in a little bit different fashion. One just tells you it's good or bad. The other one goes a little bit more. But in the end, they're the same. 
They are music fans who want to separate the good one from the great one, right? What about the algorithms? Do they have a music taste? Of course they don't. They are more likely, okay, so you like Slayer, um, you're probably gonna like Kerry King as well. Or you're like, okay, man, so you'd like D-Side's first albums, you're gonna probably like their new albums as well. And then you're like, man, fuck that shit. Even if I like the early Dark Throne albums, being raw black metal and all, not to mention the death metal debut, I hate their new shit, it's not black metal or death metal, stop recommending me this shit, it's not the same. Now you get the point, what reviewers are doing, or your friends, they're like, don't go for that man, the new Dark Throne sucks compared to the earlier, or it's actually could be the vice versa, like, more like, hey, if you do hate old Dark Throne, if you think that's raw black metal, you just like your proto metal, old heavy metal with a little bit black tonian uh, thing, go for the new Dark Throne, maybe that's the cue actually. So the point here is, algorithms are making their guesses based what you have been listening to. And while that is very, very solid information, that's not really giving you any kind of information except that one person who liked this band is gonna also like that one, right? Or maybe it's a million people, but that still doesn't tell you anything. It could be like, because some people also listen to Taylor Swift and Depeche Mode, but also this Emperor album, you're probably gonna like Taylor Swift because you listen to Emperor, like the guy here. And then you're like, fuck this, recommendation is useless. My point is not to uh, dismiss or say algorithms suck totally and they're useful as hairy balls in the mouth of a toothless uh, hooker. My point here is, they are two different things which are not like excluding one another. Thing is, you can take the benefit of algorithms, whether it comes from YouTube, Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, Apple Music, whatever you're using, and your friend recommendation. Actually, if you want to make it really, really safe bet, you take one bit of algorithms, one bit of your friendly recommendations, dig up that reviewer you hate so much, take that person's opinions into account, then some random factor number four, toss it into a ball in your hands and poof, throw it out like a dice and see, okay, Hey, actually, it makes sense. My point here is the more data you have, the more information you have, put it together, then it's easy to figure out. But of course, then the question arises, who cares? Who even has that much of time? Like, how can't you just listen to start music? I mean, of course, you can listen to random player, much like radio back in the days, and just let somebody else choose your next music. I'm not gonna say there is something wrong with that. That's not my style for sure. But if it works for you, who I'm get to say like, hey, that sucks, man. If you like listening to radio or podcasts or radio music playlist on any of those musical platforms, if that's your thing, go for it. I don't really care. It's not my business to care about what you choose to like and whatnot. My point here is to be some kind of a silly gatekeeper. And I say silly gatekeeper because I don't pretend to know more than you do. Probably know a lot less than you do right there. My point is here, like, okay, I got this album for review. What can I tell you about it? So it probably would serve your purpose as an audience right there. Like, if this album is for your listening pleasure. So if I say this album here, which I don't even know at this point, this is still in uh, wrapped. Uh, I don't know at that point what I'm going to like about this album and what genre it is. And even if I know the genre, is it going to be this or that subgenre? So my point here is, I'm going to do the dirty work of listening to that album and then figuring out what kind of audience might like it. Will you like it if you like melodic fast black metal? Surely if it's, it is like that and it's good. But if it's something else, I'm here to help you out. So instead of you going on randomly finding new bands and all that stuff, maybe you go for four minutes of reading or listening to a video or podcast, figuring out, hey, this reviewer went to the, to the sewage pipe and this drain and listens to this album and be like, okay, don't waste your time on this because there are so much better albums. Also, what is more important than what people so often uh, forget, especially if you're at the audience questioning what are reviews for, never uh, <laughs> underestimate the will what the band has to hear about their new album. Let's say a band spends some two, three years on an album making music and hoping that someone will find it. Of course, they will find the promotional value, especially if the given reviewer is gonna like it. And when the reviewer is gonna like it and praise hopefully the album, the band is like, Phew, we did something else than pure shit. And the band is gonna be happy about it. Also, labels find the promotion uh, you know, somewhat valuable. 
Because the thing is, if you spend your money buying ads online or otherwise, it's going to cost you money probably way, way, way more than sending some review or a review copy, digital or physical, doesn't matter. Because buying ads can be very, very expensive, even if you get, if you get more views than from the reviewer. But the thing is, reviewer is going to do the honest thing. Ads are just ads. Some people love ads, some people hate them. The same goes for reviewers, but it feels, of course, it's very, very different when you're comparing journalism or just review per people versus ads. Ads are not going to be neutral in any case. They're always just going to buy, 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 buy. This is the best album of the year. This is very cool and all that crazy music. You're going to like it. You're going to love it. They're not going to say, ah, um, this album might be your cup of tea, might not. You never will find out until you listen to it. They're going to sell, sell, sell. Reviewer it again is more like your friend. Uh, let me listen to it before I say any of those words. So my point here is not to actually defend my work here as a review guy. I'm not that silly. I am silly, but not that silly. My point here is to say there's a different purpose for reviewers and ads and friends recommendations and algorithms. In a perfect world, you get all the benefits of these things. Say, you see an ad of the new album. Hey, new Metallica, new D-side, new Kerry King album is out there. Or new Demo Borger or whatever. Should I listen to it? You probably will already by this point. But if it's an unknown band, you're like, what well, this is, blah, blah, blah. I can even figure out the logo. And then it pops up and maybe in some review thing, pages of a magazine on podcast or website or YouTube video. And you go, okay, now I saw the name. I probably should check it out because this reviewer is actually telling you something about it. Way it written, spoken or whatever. And then if it actually clicks, you're like, oh, yeah, this band is actually playing in my home city. And now that I know about the music, I know about the album, and they are playing in my home city, you get to be more educated. However, you decide whether or not you're going to listen to that album or their music or seeing the show. So if this doesn't make my point, all hopeless, we're gonna die and all that stuff. Then go for the algorithms, they're your best buddies. Get even an AI uh, girlfriend or boyfriend because you really don't need people telling you what to listen and whatnot. You don't even need those friend recommendations. Go for all algorithm, that's fine by me. But I hope this video kind of gives you a little bit of insight how we operate, what's the purpose, what's the audience, what are the differences of reviewers, ads and what have you. Now, once again, if you uh, have some questions, some comments or opinions about me, the channel or my purpose here or the lack of it, just fire away. Uh, I'm not made of soft glass. You can just give me the negativity and all that shit. But if my reviews are useful to you, please also let me know. I never heard of hear some positivity or maybe like what could be better and all that stuff. How do you find your new music? How do you define what bands you will check it out? Please also let me know if you're watching this end of the video at all. Now, off you go. Enjoy some metal. Enjoy the summer. Enjoy some cold drinks. Be safe.